Be good. And there we go, that was my London trip vlog thing. Um, yes, I think my vlogging skills need a little bit of work, but um, as a first attempt, then there you go. So yes, I went to London for a couple of days, just just for a couple of days. I um, It was a fairly spur of the moment trip. I kind of I can't remember what kind of made me go, I want to go to London, but um, I basically went just to catch up with a couple of friends and see some theatre, um, went to see a musical. And um, and also to do some book shopping. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, that's what I've done. I've got uh, seven books here in a kind of mini haul thing. Um, so yes. <laughs> uh, I also um, returned home to find some book mail. <laughs> uh, one from a publisher and one from a friend. So I thought we'd do that at the end. So I mainly went, the purpose of my visit was to try and get some interesting second-hand books because, you know, living in Devon, there's some interesting places around, but um, yeah, generally in London there's a bigger array of books to get secondhand. And I kind of failed miserably. Um, yeah, I ended up kind of <laughs> um, not really buying very much secondhand, but buying a lot of kind of, you know, full price stuff. And here we are. Okay, so the first book I got was from a secondhand bookshop uh, on Charing Cross Road, and it is this Aeschylus the Oristire, translated by Ted Hughes. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, that's not a Penguin classic! And, uh, no, it's not. Um, but, um, yeah, I was just like, ooh, I could quite fancy it. Now, I have not read the Oristia yet. Um, I do have some Aeschylus, um, with my Penguin classics. But I haven't read the Oristia. And the Oristia is, um, is an interesting one because it's the only, uh, trilogy, surviving trilogy left from ancient Greece. Back in the day, um, all the plays would be performed as trilogies. You had big trilogy, you had a trilogy day, you'd go to the theatre and watch a trilogy of plays, uh, but um, none of them, we only have like one, we only have like one play from each of the trilogies by everyone, and this is the only trilogy that has survived in, in full. Do you get what I mean? I hope you do. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense in my head. Now this was, um, oh I should say, this was from uh, Any Amount of Books, the Charing Cross Road Bookshop. And it's a very nice um, little sort of hokey pokey uh, shop uh, on Charing Cross Road, but this was this was not a second hand uh, price. This was um, yeah, this was you know basically full price for a book. And I was like, oh, when I took it to the counter, but then I've just realised in the um, thing it says first first PB Ed, which I assume means it's a first it's the a first edition or something. I don't know. But yes, no, I, I quite I quite like that. I quite like this. So I'm interested to read this. So next up, I went to another secondhand bookshop, which is uh, Scoob um, near Russell Square. And Scoob is interesting. It's kind of um, it's like a sort of basement shop, and it's got quite a lot of books there. Um, and yeah, I had to sort of rummage around, um, and I picked up this Dracula by Bram Stoker. Yes, I've never read Dracula before. And I'm interested to. So I've I've heard sort of different things. I mean, I've heard that it's quite sort of unintentionally camp, um, sort of to read it now. Um, but I am interested in it. Uh, years ago, like, like about ten years ago, I went to see a f an old friend in a play, in a play of Dracula. Uh, but I can't really remember any of the, any of the story other than you know, some bloke goes to the castle and la di da. Um, but yes, we shall see. What happens? So yes, Dracula, and also you know Black Spine Penguin classic. So that's good. But um, yes, I'll be interested to read that. 
And then right around the corner from Scoob is an independent bookshop uh, called Gaze the Word. <laughs> Gaze the Word. Uh, yes. So I've I've never been to this bookshop, and it, I kind of feel um, uh, what's the word? Gaze the word. <laughs> I, I feel bad for not having gone before because it's like you know independent LGBTQ bookshop. Um, but I was like, you know, what, I'm going to go and pay pay to visit and see what happens. And yes, it's a really kind of interesting shop. It's a really interesting shop. It's like a really kind of huge array of different things, like l loads of different types of books and genres and stuff. It's got a big YA section. It's got a big non-fiction section of all sorts of, sorts of things. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting. And I got uh, this book, The Transgender Issue by Sean Fay. Uh, so this is finally out in paperback. And I've been waiting for this to be out in paperback because I've been very interested in this, in this book. Uh, I've been hearing a lot of stuff about it. And um, yes, and I'm interested because I... Ye not years ago, about tw mm, four years ago... I read this book, Trends Like Me, by C.N. Lester, and this was kind of, a, from what I understand, this was like a similar kind of state of, the state of things um, back then in like 2017. And so, and this is kind of like a updated state of things at the moment, so I was interested to kind of read this book and see what she has to say. So I think it will be hard going, um, but... Uh, from what I have heard, it's an important book, so I'm interested to to read it. And also, it was just good to, you know, support the independent bookshops, especially a um, a er, one, if you know what I mean. So now for the conglomerate bookshops. So, uh, so I went to Waterstones on Gower Street, and I really like the Waterstones on Gower Street. It's really, like, because Waterstones in general, I mean, if you go into a Waterstones on a, in a high street... You know, it's fairly kind of, you know, it is what it is. You know, you kind of, I don't want to bash on Waterstones too much, but it's, um, you know, it is what it is. It's a big, you know, bookshop. It's there to kind of sell you, you know, stationery and stuff <laughs> and books. Um, and you kind of know what you're getting. But the Waterstones on Gower Street, I mean, it's kind of got their own, it's like their own sort of vibe. It's a really massive shop. It's a really massive shop and it's kind of very sort of hokey pokey. Um, it's got a really nice um, sort of dedicated designated classics section, which I really love. And um, yeah, the fiction section is massive. And I just really like, I, I just really like the vibe there. I think because it's sort of, um, it's near the university. Um, yeah, it's just a really nice, really, very nice big shop. And I got three books there. Ooh. So I got, uh, I got this dinky little thing, got Dr. Faustus, by Marlowe. Yes, I kind of I've got a um, ulterior motive to getting this, um, which I won't go into just now. Yeah, so I I picked this up and I was reading this on the coach and I didn't realise this contains uh, two versions of the play. I was like, what? Um, yeah, because I sort of read I read the first version, um, and then got to like the <laughs> this like the B text and I was like, what? So yeah, there's like there's two versions of of the play. Um, now, I've never read uh, Dr. Faustus, I've, well, until now. I've never read Dr. Faustus, I've never seen Dr. Faustus, um, and yeah, I've never read Christopher Marlowe, really, in, in full. And I'm interested to see kind of the difference of, um, you know, the, the difference between him and Shakespeare and stuff. And from what I've um, read, I mean, I just read it on the coach, um, yeah, it's sort of just interesting kind of vibe from it. Um, also, you have the kind of the good angel and the, and the evil angels on the shoulders, you know. So that was interesting. But yeah, little dinky little uh, play there. Uh, then also, I got William Langland, Piers the Ploughman. <laughs> um, yeah, I was interested to read this because uh, there's a documentary at the moment on BBC called The Art That Made Us. And uh, they keep kind of, I really like that documentary, and they kind of, they keep talking about these um, sort of classic texts and stuff. And yeah, it just makes me interested in them, and this was kind of one of them. Uh, yeah, kind of a, a Middle Ages poem, although I think this is written in prose, a prose translation. Um, so yeah, I was just interested to read this, Piers the Ploughman. And finally, I got this little novella, uh, The Death of Francis Bacon, uh, by Max Porter. So I haven't read um, any Max Porter before, I haven't read Grief is the Thing with Feathers, or Lan Lanny, Lanny, Lenny, Lanny? Lanny? Lanny. 
Yeah, I haven't read them, but um, yeah, I just saw this little novella and I've, I've heard a couple of things about it and I was like, ooh! So I, uh, I got it. I've got a thing about Francis Bacon. Um, I do like his, I do really like his paintings a lot. Like, very dark and nasty paintings. But I, um, but yeah. And I was just very kind of interested because this is kind of, um, very kind of stylized little novella. And uh, yeah, just very, very interested to read that. There we go. And lastly, uh, the last sort of big conglomerate place I went to uh, was Foils, the big Foils um, bookshop on Charing Cross Road. Um, which, if you haven't been, is just like, it's a glorious, uh, you know, big, massive bookshop on five levels, I think. Um, and I had a browse, and this was very, very spare at the moment, but I got this, if not winter. Uh, fragments of Sappho, and these are translated by Anne Carson. So I do have a um, an edition of Sappho poems. Um, it's the Penguin Classic one, the Stung with Love one, and I did like that. But um, after kind of reading a bit more about that translation, um, the translator has kind of taken liberties with her poems. So Sappho is an ancient Greek poet. Um, she was from Lesbos. And uh, what has survived of her poems is very, very, kind of, um, very, very little bits. Um, there's only one, I think, full poem of hers that's sort of survived. But she's really, really influential and everyone kind of references her and talks about her through um, ancient Greece and Rome. So Plato, you know, was a big, big fan of her and stuff. Um, and so, yeah, so I found this. And this is the translation and the book that I... I was really kind of after because it kind of it doesn't do yeah because the problem because the problem with that translation was that um he kind of filled in the gaps so there's a lot of places where um like words are missing or little phrases are missing and that translator tried to kind of fill in the gaps and it was sort of like mm, do you do that whereas Anne Carson she doesn't do that she basically just translates what is there and nothing else and so what you have then is these tiny little bits. But I don't know, for some reason, I just really love it. I really, really love it. You burn me! <laughs> and I was reading, I, I was, um, I went into a cafe and I was reading it and I got quite moved, actually, by it. Because, um, yeah, just things like this. So, can you see that? So you've got the Greek on one side and then the translation on the other. And, um, yeah, I just really... I would not think to touch the sky with two arms. And yeah, I just really, I really, really love it. I really, really love it. I think it's... Yeah, weirdly, there is something quite moving about it and very kind of... Because some of the phrases are so kind of... Even though it's just one sentence or just a few words, they're just really... They've got a power about them. They're really evocative and it's just really kind of... I really love it. I really, really love it. Ooh! I think this is kind of like a... A bedside table book forever <laughs> kind of book. So yeah, I didn't do too badly. Let's have another little rundown. Yes, there we go. Interesting mix. So now, just got uh, the book mail to open. So, uh, this was from my friend. I do know what these are. Um, this is from my friend. Uh, yes. Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Oh, I did not... I didn't know it won the Pulitzer. I didn't know it won a Pulitzer. <laughs> That's interesting. There's a sequel out soon, or a follow-up book to this. And my friend was like, um, oh, are you going to get it? And I was like, well, I haven't read less yet. And he was like, what? So yes, he got me this, so thank you very much. Um, yes, I don't really know what it's about. Arthur Less is a failed novelist about to turn 50. A wedding invitation arrives in the post. It's from an ex-boyfriend, ex-boyfriend of nine years. He was engaged to someone else. Arthur can't say yes, it would be too awkward. He can't say no, it would look like defeat. So he begins to accept the invitations on his desk to half-baked literary events around the world. <laughs> well, that's interesting. And it won the Pulitzer. Very, very intrigued. Okay. And last book, I have a uh, package here from Cadengate. Uh, so let's have a look. Ooh! Oh, it's a proper, proper, proper. Look at this. And here we are. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, so we've got two uh, poetry collections. So we've got The Fire People 
and more fire! Uh, so yeah, so the fire people, a collection of British black and Asian poetry, and then more fire, this is a new collection of black British poetry, and yes! Ooh! Ooh, aren't they? Aren't they nice? They're very, very nice. Thank you, Canongate. Gate. Let's have a look. In 1998, Lemsis sees the fire people uh, ignited a movement and paved the way for the black British poetry scene that thrives today. Uh, today, over 20 years on, Kayo Chingonyi, sorry if that's pronounced him correctly, is continuing this legacy by bringing together this, his dream mixtape of black British poets in more fire. This scorching new collection passes the torch to the next generation to create, thrive and inspire. Excellent. Fabulous. Ooh, fabulous. I'm going to enjoy that. Excellent. Thank you, Canning Gate. Ooh. And they're really, really... I do like a good, nice, small hardback. I mean, these aren't small, but just, you know, you know what I mean? I do like it. So, wow, I've not done too badly, have I? Look at this. Oh. There we go. Ooh! Very nice. Oh, very nice. Yes, so I'll enjoy getting around to these. So having a haul like this, um, it does mean that I do need to get rid of some books as well. So maybe I'll do an unhaul video at some point. So yes, thank you for watching, if you've been watching, and I shall see you very soon. Goodbye!